Without this tool, you're wasting your time in Unreal Engine. I'm not joking. Stick around and I'll show you the best time saving tool you can get. And it doesn't matter if you are new to Unreal Engine or a professional. You always want to save time. So welcome to my empty test scene. I don't have anything in here. The only thing I will add is Ultra Dynamic Sky under Blueprints. I just drag and drop it. Give it a second to load. And same for the weather system. And that's everything I'm doing. I put the weather on clear. And let's just zero them out all real quick. I want to create just a little, um, not really a forest environment, but um, some forest ground with some close-up shots, maybe a hero asset, just to show you why Dash is such a time saver. And to start Dash, I just click the little A in the top left corner, um, right off the selection mode, just hit it. And we get this fancy looking interface. You could use dash in full screen mode by hitting F11 and you don't need to touch your outliner. I think for maybe just some project settings, um, but you don't really need it. You can use it in full screen mode. I leave it like that for the moment. Um, first of all, we need some kind of terrain. So we could use our normal um, landscape tool, create a terrain. You can use a plane, whatever you want to use. And the cool thing is, we can just create a terrain by typing it into dash. So if we type terrain and hit enter, we now have a terrain. Awesome, easy. Thanks for watching, see you next time. And then we have our terrain generator. So we can change whatever we want in this terrain. If we go to wireframe mode and just maybe double the subdivisions, we now have six subdivisions. But I think, I think three is fine for the moment. And we can change the scale of the terrain. If we put that on 10, that thing gets really large. You can also, let me make it a little bit smaller again and go back into our normal, normal view. We can curve it more, so the edges. That could be really helpful if we want to, let's say we have some lower angle shots and we want to, to hide the infinite, um, yeah, the infinite skybox. Um, I don't really care about it right now. So I think one is fine for me, but we can add some turbulence in the terrain like so. And we can say how high they should be like so. But that's a little bit, a little bit much. And you can control the midpoint and change the seat of the terrain. All of that cool and fancy stuff. But right now it's pretty empty. And let me close the terrain generator. We want to add some, some color to it. And for that, we just go into the um, content editor. I make sure mine is on mega scans mode, mega scan mode, and hit the little folder, go to surface, and let's just look for forest. And let's use this texture. Okay, that was a bit quick. So, so we have high quality and highest quality. These are the little buttons. You can switch the quality levels. And I used highest quality and you just drag and drop it on the terrain and then boom, it's that easy. For scale, let's just quick create a cube and put it on the ground, maybe scale it up a little bit. And if I look from here, I would change the tiling and that's the really cool stuff you don't need to play around with the material instance with the material you just let's say this window isn't here you just click your terrain click the color palette and now you're in the edit material you just go under tiling and my feeling says five would be right let's see five and that looks way better i would say maybe even six or seven but let's leave it on six. And now you can still play around with the normal map, map it, make it stronger, um, turn it off completely if you want. For mega scans, I normally use 0.8 or 0.9 because they are quite strong. You can change the roughness. I put that on 0 0.7, 0 0.8. And brightness saturation, if you want to be blind after creating a terrain, you put that on five. If you hate color completely, you put that on zero. You can do whatever you want. And it's so much faster than using um, instances, materials, 
the normal Unreal Engine stuff. I'm convinced this is the future of working with Unreal. It's, it's really fast. And you can also enable a completely separate dirt layer just to break up the tiling because right now, obviously, we have only one material. I'm pretty sure you can just blend multiple together, but right now we don't need that. And you can just enable dirt, you can enable snow, and I don't need any snow or dirt, so I'm fine with that. And let's delete our cube. And right now our scene is a little bit empty. So I said we go for something forest-like and I would say we need some assets for that. And for that, I just go into the content manager again, plans, and then we have different plans or these are the plans I downloaded. If you starting out with Dash and you didn't download anything, you just hit these three points, open Quixel bridge, and then well, what a wonder, bridge, uh, bridge is opening. And if we go in bridge and look for foliage, um, 3D plants, and let's say just some ground cover, maybe, no, not a crowberry. Let's use this one. This looks generic, looks like a good filler asset, highest quality, download. So now it's downloaded. And before we had 18, now we have 19. So Bridge is sending that stuff over, or let's say Dash is looking for it. And now we have our little plant here. To put it in our scene, we can just drag and drop it. Obviously we want more than one plant. And we just hold control and drag and drop it. And then hit scatter here. And give it a second to do its magic. And look at that, we have a lot of plants. And now we have some nice looking foliage. Beautiful. And I need to be a little bit careful here because obviously I'm also recording. And um, let me make the terrain a little bit smaller. Yeah, like so on one, that should be fine. I don't need so much space because I'm just creating a small scene. And if I click the foliage, and click the one, two button, I come back into my um, settings. So here we have the scale, min and max scale. If we compare it to the ground, it is a little bit off. I would put that on point two and that on, let's say, point five. But then we want a lot more of them. And then we have a ton more settings, noise scale. That is a really nice one. If you hover over it, you also get some um, tooltips. If the value is bigger than zero, switch randomly scaling to simplex noise based scaling. So you have a noise effect which is um, helping with the scale, with the random scale of the foliage, which is super useful. You have a surface align, you have a sync, you have random sync. And let's put that on one. So they are just a little bit in the ground. You can again change the seat to whatever you want and get a completely different result. And then we have future masking, uh, feature masking, rotation properties. You have so much stuff, noise mask. So if we go into the noise mask, so yeah, like so 0 0.4, 0 0.3, we can create some um, nice breakup. So it's not so even on the terrain. And then you can also adjust the, the scale of the breakup, the um, noise scale parameters, all of that cool stuff. And object masking and proximity mask we will cover in a second because that's really cool. So first let's create a camera. And for that we don't need to go like here and then cinematics and cinema actor and la 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 la. We just go in our bar, hit camera, done, boom. And here we also have a ton of options. So. Let's go a little bit lower. I think I will have a final angle like this somewhere. Um, but I want to go for, let's say, 80 millimeters. Let's go a little bit back. Aperture 2.8 um, should be fine. Let's see where our focus is. Yeah, it's coming. Okay. The only thing I'm missing in this system is... Um, if we create 
a camel or an unreal engine, we have a draw debug plane. So that's a little purple plane. You can enable this option and it shows you where your focus is. That would be a nice to have, like a, just a debug plane so you know where the focus is. And I know I want to go for something for, for that angle. I know aperture of 2.8 um, is good. So I have some nice um, blur in the background and in the foreground. And even in here, we can just play around with post-processing, color correction. You can even use gradients, adjust how much of the gradient you want. You can add film grain. You can add so much stuff. I leave it like this for the moment. And right now I want to change the time of day. So I just go for, let's say, let's say two, roughly two in the afternoon. Or I can just um, see what looks nice. That is an interesting shot. Something like this could be interesting. And I think we need to place a hero asset here and maybe use a little bit more foliage on the ground. So let me exit the camera and dock it real quick. So I have, I still have the, oh, where is it? I still have the preview, what the camera sees. I could open um, a new viewport for that, but there is no need because you guys can't see it. And I just leave it like that. And right now, let's think what we could use as a hero asset. I'm a fan of jerry cans. I have no idea why. <laughs> I just like to use them. And I'm pretty sure we have some. Oh, we had some at, uh, at Epic Games. Let's see. Jerry can. Yeah. It's a little, little, it's a little bit boring. Um, let's download it. Let's see what we also can use. We could, and then we want some, I don't know, I want something industrial. So I think these wet barrels could work. Let's download them and see how they perform in our little test scene. And as always, Dash also, uh, Dash already have everything imported. So let's, oh, let's close uh, forest and search for rust. So I have my jerry can. Hmm. Let's try it out. Let's drag it in the scene. Give it a second to compile the textures. By the way, I didn't really cover how to move stuff. If you just hit quick help, uh, the arrow, you get a real nice instruction how to interact, rotate, scale, all of that stuff. And now I need to re-enable the game mode so I can find my camera. And it's about here. Let me look through the camera, right click, pilot. Okay, so we are getting somewhere. Let's put that guy down. However, um, the scale is not really wide at the moment. Let's put it on two, but it's just a test scene, so it should be fine. I mean, it's something. Let's try out the wet barrels. So I just hop out of the camera again, just drag and drop them. So let's place our barrel and hop back into the camera let's hit g real quick so we can get rid of the grid mm, i feel that one oops i feel that one should be laying and i think we need to scale down the plants a little bit so let's go back into the plants min scale let's use point 0.1 max scale point 0.3 but let's generate more that's a little bit too much 0.9 yeah that could work so right now i just want to change the angle of the sun or let's say the time of day i like that one so i feel that time of day and let's put that one here that time of day and that angle could work really good Let's click on my camera and go back in the settings because obviously we are not really focused. Make it like this. Let's see what gradients we have. I feel, where is it? That one is quite interesting. Let's put it on point two, point three, like so. I mentioned a mask before. So a huge problem with foliage 
interacting with objects is, I hope you can see it, stuff like this here, foliage clipping into the asset. Well, it makes sense because that's how the foliage system works, but Dash has a really smart way around that. So we just click on the foliage, enter our settings, and so a smart way to get rid of foliage close or inside our mesh is to use the proximity mask. You can also use object masking, um, but uh, let's try that one first. So I just hit the object I want to include, hit the plus, and as you can see, the foliage inside the jerry can is now gone. And here we can control the distance. So how close can the foliage get? As you can see, if I put it on zero, it's again inside. How close can foliage grow to the object? And uh, here you can use the sampling weight. So how precise this um, distance is. And then you also have object masking, which um, can be also inverted. So if you want to have something in the basket, like foliage growing in a basket, you can, for instance, invert, uh, not invert, um, keep inside. So it's inverting the, um, the effect. But for our use, proximity mask works perfect. Let's do the same here. I'm still in the, in the foliage mode. So here you always can see um, the name on what you're working, common hemp nettle, and I just go proximity mask at at this object and now the foliage between these two is gone. If I move my object, for instance, it's updating. So that's why um, it's taking a second to move it, but then it's um, updating the radius around the objects. I think I leave it like that. Just want to play around a little bit with the light. Sometimes, yeah, evening shots look really good. Maybe something like that. And if I go back into the camera, I could um, go on a post-processing. And Unreal is always lacking a little bit of sharpening. So I put that on one and it's, look at that. I mean, it looks awesome how crisp it is. It's so good. Maybe a little bit of a film grain and I don't want any bloom. Color correction, that's also nice so we can play a little bit with the contrast. So let's say you want to save the shot. How? Pretty easy. You just click the little three bars on top, high resolution screenshot. Um, normally I use a multiplier of two. Try to stay under six because um, then you get quite intense images. Capture. And here we have, um, yeah, some screenshots I did before. That one was from the test environment. And that one we just built. And keep in mind, that was really slow because I was explaining a lot of stuff to you. You can pump that stuff out in maybe five minutes. So Dash is so powerful. And if you are getting into environment art, try it out. I think there is even a free trial version. And check out this video where I explain how the physics tool works in Dash because that is really useful if you want to simulate realistic wobble piles, stuff like that. So give it a look and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.